all else, 1983 was the year when the new romantics peaked and went mainstream, when boys were flamboyant and girls were jealous, when no mother's curtains and tablecloths were safe. The whole new romantic thing was, uh, I think, probably a great breath of fresh air, really. The so-called new romantic thing was just a small period. Um, but even there, people still refer to it. It was an identity of England, which is good. Unfortunately, it was men in makeup. The kings of new romantic pottery formed at an Islington grammar school. By 1983, they were on the way to the top. They were glamorous without being glam, and they were very showbiz. Pop music was pop music in them days. There's no question that Duran Duran Spandau Ballet uh, marked that year with uh, a certain stamp. Uh, ha, ha, ha. You know, you've got, I don't know, 40 languages throughout the world that can sing that hook. Now, I don't think any of us thought it was a single. I mean, it was a, you know, it sounded wonderful and beautiful and everything, but it was completely different to all the rest of the, of the stuff that Spandau had been doing before. I bought a ticket to the world, but now I've come back again. So it was the first time that we scored a number one in our own country, and then it went to, God, number one in 21 countries around the world. I don't even know if they could have known uh, the importance of that record. That was always one of them songs um, where you'd probably wait till the end of the school disco and then you'd maybe move in on the chick of your choice. You know, kids 19, 20 are coming along to the concerts now and they're going, oh, True's my favourite record. I go, yeah, but I could be your dad practically, you know what I mean? The Spans reached their creative and commercial peak in 1983 when they were taking their seaside arms and finding it hard to write the next line. No, we don't know what they meant either, but this much was true. Spandau Ballet are still active on the live circuit or busy acting. Martin Kent made it in EastEnders, Gary also acts, and Tony Hadley made his TV debut in Down to Earth alongside Pauline Quirk. Please, please tell me now. But the sultry Spans didn't have it all their own way in 1983. A collection of equally sharp cheekbones from Birmingham were challenging them every mascara inch of the way to the peak of the new romantic blowout. When their tape arrived, it was much more rockier than Spandau and much more raw. For them and us, we were the sort of two bands. It was the, the sort of the blur of the oasis of the 80s. For the first time, they weren't new romantic artists anymore. They made their, they could stand on their own two feet just as like classic quality pop groups. It was a real Durrani. That's what they were called in those days. That track mixed Beatles hooks with uh, 80s new romantic pop and really established Duran Duran, I think, as a world force. The songs were good, the videos were spectacular. Um, I think the videos actually became more important than them in the end. Another new romantic peak was the pop video. Duran were King's Real the Defining Moment. Shot in Antigua by Highlander director Russell Mulcahy, it oozed new romantic excess. Duran Duran recently completed a world tour and toy makers are said to be developing a range of action figures based on the band. So that's your granny's birthday sorted. However, one man was staying true to the new romantic pantomime roots. Stuart Goddard abandoned all thoughts of being taken seriously when he donned the war paint and called himself Adamant. By 1983 in Puss in Boots, even John Inman was calling him Hammy. The new romantic thing started, I guess, for me when I saw Adamant on the telly. Um, and the videos were just, they were like mini films. <laughs> Adamant. I mean, just fancied Adamant. No one worked harder than him to promote himself than he did. I bought all his stationery from WH Smith. I had a ruler with Adamant and everything. Adamant meant a lot to me because um, it was the first record I ever bought. Puss in Boots, probably one of his most ridiculous records. Surely not.
Now, I remember dressing up as Credible Hulk at that time, but never, never had a man. Never had a man at all. <laughs> they all look sharp. It's all frilly shirts, little pixie boots. I remember sort of the big cuffs and the big collars. And they used to stand around with their, like, long fringes and everything and their big blouse on shirts and all that kind of thing. I didn't like the new romantic because I didn't think that it was right for men to be wearing makeup and, you know, all these big sort of flouncy clothes. I remember thinking at school, that's for us girls. In truth, it was more an era of crimpers than crooners, more heated rollers than heated rock and roll. In 1983, the haircut was king. Mental hair is just like all frizzed out all over the place and all sticking up a bit like my hair. Guys had long hair, but they always were desperate to look dead butch. It's only two years ago, the man with the suit and the face. There hasn't been a period, I don't think, like that, where it was a nationwide obsession. There's been people, I know, coming on in ridiculous outfits and everything, looking really scruffy and dirty. It's been a ballet as a whole. I've always been into sort of I've always been fashion conscious. It's very, very individual. As I say, everyone has got their individual sort of taste, although they follow the same line, and that line is, is a question of elegance and romance. I didn't take myself too seriously.